Good for that young man. The Bucks are one win away, L, from their first title in 50 years. And Milwaukee is buzzing for tonight's Game 3 against the Suns. 9 Eastern on ABC as we are inside three hours away from tip-off and some of the big storylines heading into tonight. Bucks head coach Mike Budenholzer has been tremendous in clinching scenarios. He has a 9-2 and record in those games, the second best win percentage of any coach in NBA playoff history. On the other side, the Suns are looking to keep their season alive and push it to Phoenix for Game 7. The Suns are 1-2 and two in franchise history when facing elimination in the NBA Finals. And Giannis is a big reason the Bucks are in this position. He's averaging over 32 points per game in his first finals, the fourth most by any player through their first five finals games. Sports Center on the Road is presented by Rocket Mortgage as we go live to Milwaukee. Stephen A. Smith joins us now. And, you know, Stephen A., one of the things that really stands out about this situation tonight is the word legacy, especially Giannis. Yeah. When you talk about him deciding to stay in Milwaukee and sign the Supermax and decide to become a Buck long term, what would winning a title tonight mean for his legacy as well as the city of Milwaukee? Well, first of all, it's going to be a tremendous thing for his legacy. The fact that he's one of the great players in the game, a reigning two-time league MVP. You take that into consideration along with the fact that you stay in Milwaukee, you sign for $245 million. You don't depart for a bigger market uh, with a super team joining forces and shifting the balance of power. And instead, you stay put. Guys come to you and you ultimately win a championship. That says a lot about you. When you do it with such a level of dominance, averaging 32 and 13 in the NBA Finals, that also contributes to the level of dominance. So we got to take all of those things into consideration. But more importantly than anything else, what a huge, huge lift it would be for the National Basketball Association. Because rather than big time superstars trying to join forces to capture a championship. You have him as the standard to point to to say you don't necessarily have to do that. You don't need to have another superstar or two other superstars. You could be a superstar and you could have two all-stars with you and you could still get it done. That is the story that would be written about Giannis Antetokounmpo if he was able to capture a championship tonight in game six or if it goes to a game seven captures it Thursday night. That's what everybody would be saying about him and he'll deserve it okay now yesterday on this same show in sports center kendrick perkins said that cp3 needs cpr you told our l duncan that when you hear that kind of statement and you see this team has lost three straight and you're trying to find out what happened to chris paul from what we saw in that first game to where we are right now what does he need to do tonight to force a game seven I think he needs to know his personnel better and know who to get the ball to and when and, and dictate the action from that, stand, that vantage point. The Milwaukee Bucks are bigger, stronger, more physical, more athletic. They know it, and they expect to be playing downhill tonight. They're going to go in attack mode. That's what some of them told me last night. And so when you look at it from that perspective, now we transition to what the Phoenix Suns need to do. The only way it seems that the Phoenix Suns can beat this Milwaukee Bucks team is if guys play like stars and you're hitting shots from the perimeter. CP3 scoring 21 and having 11 assists, that's a plus. Devin Booker dropping 40 in back-to-back -back games, that's a plus. But you're going to have to get a third wheel involved. And even though DeAndre Ayton had 20 and 10, that's not enough. He's a lone ranger on the front line. We know that he needs all the help that he can get, and it's going to have to come from the perimeter. So to me, Monty Williams and CP3 have to collaborate with one another to make sure they get somebody else involved. My selection would be Cam Johnson. This brother shoots better than 47% from the field, better than 45% from three-point range. He's got a lot of potential, and he's been open. They need to find him, get him more involved, get him the damn ball, and pray that it's enough to ward off Milwaukee in game six. That's what you need to do. Last two games have been fantastic. We'll see if CP3's leadership can stand out, especially in the final minute of the game. Stephen A. Smith not going anywhere. Going to join us later on SportsCenter. Don't forget, Matt, the Bucks made that huge comeback in it Game is. five. I know. I know you haven't, and neither have Suns fans. And now they have their first lead of the series. So teams that go up three games to two in the finals go on to win 81 percent of the time. Obviously, that would mean a whole lot for these fans. Can't believe Tim said the capacity would double perhaps tonight in the Deer District. A Bucks have gone 49 seasons between championships. Look at that footage. 
And Chris Paul looking to stop that. He's on the verge of becoming the first player to lose four seven-game series in which his team led 2-0. All of which brings us to Dave McMenamin for that side of the story. The Suns looking to put the Bucks back on a plane like their coach Monty Williams said. Send them back to the Valley for Game 7 where the home team wins over 90% of the time. How do they plan to apply that pressure to the Bucks tonight? Well, certainly, Hannah, obviously there's inherent pressure to a game six in an elimination scenario. When I asked Chris Paul about what he's feeling going into this one, and he said, I'm actually excited. He said, if early on in the season, if Coach Monty Williams told us that you were going to be in this scenario, win two games and you get the NBA championship, I would certainly take it. I like the guys in our locker room to be able to be capable to pull off this feat. And it's not a simulation. This is actually us. It's real. We're here right now. Now, of course, there's things they're going to have to do better than they did in Game 5, particularly try to generate some more three-point looks. They shot almost 70% as a team from deep in Game 5, but they only got 19 threes. Earlier in the playoffs, they were putting up 40 threes in a game, and that's because of the Bucks' defensive schemes. A couple things they're going to have to go against, uh, some statistical trends, if you will. One, teams are just 4-21 and 21 all time being down 3-2 in the 2-2-1-1-1 NBA Finals uh, format. So certainly that's something going against the Suns. And then look at the officiating. Scott Foster, the dreaded Scott Foster, <laughs> is going to be the crew chief tonight for the Suns. Chris Paul has lost his last 12 playoff games that Scott Foster was the head referee. Okay, but here's the thing. you got to throw that out the window, and you got to do something about that Bucks. the switching on the defense. They're forcing the Suns into this one-on-one -on -one game. As you mentioned, they got to move the ball. Uh, they have a lot on their plate uh, besides the presence of Scott Foster. Uh, we always appreciate you, Dave. Thanks. All right, so the Suns trail in a playoff series for just the second time and first since being down 2-1 against the Lakers in the first round, which seemed like January, but it wasn't. They will now look to become the fifth team to win a finals game six on the road to force a game seven of the previous four teams to do so. Only the 1962 Celtics won both games six and seven. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, game day perk just hits a little bit different. So, Perk, give me this. It, it, <laughs> it hasn't been great lately, so what does Chris Paul have to do better to help Phoenix get this thing back to the desert? Well, he can't show up to the game being Cliff Paul. Drew Holiday is not <laughs> trying to be in commercials. Drew Holiday is not trying to buy insurance. Drew Holiday is going at Chris Paul. Chris Paul has to take this matchup personal. Chris Paul has to dominate this game. Chris Paul has to be the leader. This young core looks up to who? CP3. Why? Because he brings that tenacity. He brings that fire. He brings that edge. And when you have a group of young guys that's under the age of 25, like Mikael Bridges, DeAndre Ayton, Devin Booker, Cam Johnson, all those guys that are in the moment right now, CP3 has to give them that edge, has to give them that heartbeat. He needs to be that heartbeat. We know he could get 20 and 10 in his sleep, but those numbers have to elevate even more. And he has to elevate the others around him even more, not just Devin Booker. Yeah, but where'd it go? It, it's been there, and, and where'd it go? You said, well, I'm sorry, Matt, I couldn't understand what you said. Where did that go from CP3? We saw it in the first round. We saw it in the second round. We saw it against the Clippers. We saw it in the first two games. I mean, it, it, Perk, it's gone. Well, it, it is. It is. And it's missing. And it's because of Drew Holiday. We have to give Drew Holiday credit. We have to give Mike Budenholzer credit. Right now, you look at this series, It had the tides have turned for his coaching. Mike Budenholzer made the adjustment by putting Chris, uh, Drew Holiday on Chris Paul. Mike Budenholzer made the adjustment by moving Giannis to the five, switching everything. It's time for Monty Williams to make the adjustment. He has to make the in-game adjustments, the personnel adjustments, get DeAndre Ayton more touches on the low block when the man goes 7 for 13 from the field and has 20 and 10, and he has these small 
smaller guards on them in the paint. They have to get more, but it starts with the head of the snake. And that's Monty Williams and that's CP3. Those are the leaders of this young group, and they have to put them in position to be successful. Right now, Mike Budenholzer have changed the hands of time, and he's out coaching Monty Williams. All right, Perk, quickly, a win tonight for Giannis. Where would that put him in the NBA's hierarchy with the championship? Ooh, it will put him up there. And I know people want to say Big Perk and Giannis hater, but to me it will put him in a conversation of a top 10 power forward of all time. And the kid and the guy's just touching his prime. He's 27 is his prime. We're going to see 10 more years of Giannis Antetokounmpo play at this level. If he's to win this championship along with the finals MVP, he enters that conversation. Because not only do he have a back-to-back -back MVP, but he has an MVP and defensive player of the year in one season. The only two players to ever have that is Michael Jordan and Nakeem Olajuwon. And you win a championship with an MVP, with the, a finals MVP, it puts you up there in them rankings. Also entering their prime, you. Your TV Prime. Park, thank you. Uh, I'm, tr I'm trying, Matt. I need a haircut.